Aww, you shouldn't have. One, two, three, four, five, six geese are laying, and what they're laying is this. Perfect balance. If a piston shakes up and down, its counterweight shakes fore and aft. Twin them and you get a rocking couple. Threesomes never go smoothly, I hear. Quadrupling balances everything except secondary vibes, which exist because pistons move faster from top to mid than mid to bottom, and five again solves nothing. The first theoretically perfect engine is a bank of six. Mathematically, this is the smallest zero vibration design you can make. An awkward truth, six is more cylinders than most Honda cars. But perfection never compromises, so six it must be. Do you see what Honda got rid of to make room? Do you notice how those outboard cylinders are singularly preeminent? No clutch basket or alternator that normally flanks an engine. Honda conceived of a way to steal power from the middle of the crankshaft, chained to a secondary jack shaft that drives a remote alternator and clutch. That allows our accoutrement to piggyback the motor. So we get a six cylinder that is barely wider than a conventional four. And such a standalone bank is beautifully statuesque. I had to promise the owner I wouldn't park it near UBC lest the undergrads throw it in the river. The CBX was the first motorcycle to break 100 horsepower the first motorcycle to break 225 kilometers per hour, all with perfectly zeroed vibration. Riding a straight six is as still as sitting on one in the museum, only when you twist your wrist and go brum brum, the world spins. This is Japan's talisman. They say every time a CBX hits redline, a mechanic finds his 10 millimeter. And they say Honda sent all the prototypes to journalists in California because Japan didn't need to be told that it feels perfect. By pure, cold definition, it is perfect. The clarity of night is my favorite setting to feel a new bike. Unfortunately, it's difficult to film such pure moments, or rather, it used to be. This f2.6 lens is made in collaboration with Leica to capture more of the low light. The sensor is 0.77 inches, larger than GoPro's 0.53. And the AI chip that denoises low light in pure video mode is fabricated at 5 nanometers. We pride ourselves on being unfaithful bastards to brands, which is why Fortnite filmed with GoPros for 8 years and then switched to Ace Pros like that. They're just objectively better, especially in the dark. <laughs> I'm supposed to say thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video, but such relationships mean nothing to bastards like us, so thanks to Insta360's engineers for building a better tool. That's why I admire Honda. They also consider marketing to be an engineering problem. So, to market the CBX, they embedded their engineers in Hayakuri Air Force Base for 10 days. They saw how altimeters were designed for high-speed readability with black backgrounds and thick, white-tipped needles. And they saw how airframes were perched atop engines, so they lost the down tube from the prototype, perching CBX's frame atop its stressed motor. And they tape recorded the F4 Phantom at takeoff, tasking audio engineers with designing an exhaust to precisely replicate its howl. This is the most tantalizing of the CBX files. Because when Honda boss Tadashi Kume first heard it, he went on record as saying it sounded shockingly identical to the fighter jet. And Kume decreed, You've gone too far. The feeling of that noise is just too much. We cannot build motorcycles that sound like jet fighters. To this day, collectors are hunting that abandoned prototype part. A strange, dusty muffler with no markings that would make this CBX sound precisely like death. I too would give my actual urethra to lay hands on that pipe, but I also know that Kume was a genius, and what worried him and how the CBX presented itself was 
something serious, something that would change motorcycling to this day, only well, no one else could see it yet. Five years, the CBX sold slow, then slower, then not at all. In 1982, the last were given away as dissection specimens for trainee mechanics. So what did Kume foresee? I feel no red flags. It handles like any of the 70s Hondas that sold in the hundreds of thousands. The only unusual thing is the on-throttle response. It's the fastest of any carbureted bike I've ever ridden. I think, I think, this crankshaft weighs precisely the same as this throttle tube. Yee! <laughs> now there are faster bikes in 2023, of course, but nothing feels faster than the CBX. Everything about it is just an elevation of what made motorcycles great. And that is the problem Kume saw. Until now, improvement meant putting more and more power into a 1960s cradle, an idea that peaked with the CBX. But Kume rightly recognized this as the point of crisis. The point where giving a motorcycle more ability starts to take off from the average rider's ability. Consumers found the CBX chilling. 225 kph was not a comfortable place to sit. 104 horses were too many terrain. 24 valves on a 6,000 kilometer interval was more than any flight crew wants to manage. It's one valve for every shoot day we've had. The top of the mountain is cold. And from here, all you can see is what's on the horizon. Honda's VFs launched the very year CBX dies. Aluminum box frames, eventually linked braking, ABS, traction control, dual clutch transmissions. It's a paradigm rift. Up to the CBX, improvement meant overcoming deficiencies in the bike. From here, improvement would mostly mean overcoming deficiencies in the rider. Going faster no longer meant making power, it meant managing power. Like everyone, Kume heard that the F4 sounds amazing, but what he understood is that very few actually want to fly one. So here's a question. It applies to much of our tech culture, so I'll keep our metaphor in motorcycling terms. When the aim was to augment the equipment, the inevitable consequence was a motorcycle that is mostly redundant. If the aim is to augment the rider, will the inevitable consequence be to make the human redundant? And I admit the CBX scares me. It's now a rare object to expose one's shortcomings without auto-correcting them. Maybe that's a good thing. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks to Insta360 for making the Ace Pro. Please don't buy one because they sponsored this video. Click the link below and consider those specs. Also, thank you to my neighbor, who showed us that the greatest gift is not to buy something, but to share something. Merry Christmas. See you in a bit. <laughs>